Hello and welcome back. In this video, I will show you how to spawn actors in Unreal Engine. Let's get started. First of all, you will need to get the spawn actor node. So here we are in the third person character blueprint and we're going to right click and search for spawn actor. And you can see here, we have a spawn actor from class. Select it and you'll get this node. So this node has a few inputs and one output, which is going to be the actor return value. But we'll talk about that later. The first thing you need to do is to select a class. A class is the actor itself that you create when you click on blueprint class. So going back to the spawn actor node, we can select class and here I have already created a blueprint called Peter. So we're going to search for Peter. Now, once you select an actor, sometimes you will get this instigator object reference. And we'll talk about that later too. If you were to try to use this node, but just by setting the class here, you're going to get an error. So here we have a event. When you press Q, it will fire this event. And now we're going to compile. And you're going to see we have an error because you need to have a spawn transform. If not, we don't know where this actor is going to spawn. So in the third person character blueprint, I have made a component, which is a target. And this target is positioned around here. So we're going to drag this into the blueprint, drag it of the pin, and we're going to get the transform location. So just type in get transform and we need to get the world transform. Once we have this, we can plug it in to the spawn transform and then compile. And now when we press on Q, we should spawn Peter. Oh, and Peter, this is what he looks like. Good old blocky Peter. So we're going to walk around and I'm going to press Q. There we go. We have one Peter in the world, two Peters, three Peters, four. <laughs> you can have uh, many Peters in the world. So this is how very simply you can spawn a few actors in the world. But there are some other options we can use. Peter in itself has collision enabled. So all these cubes collide with things. And when you spawn something, sometimes you don't want it to spawn if it's going to spawn in a place that it is going to be colliding in. So to show you what I mean, we're going to select a few options in the collision handling override. Usually you can leave it at default, but when you need to, you can change it. The first option here is always spawn, ignore collisions. So this is what it's going to do. Let's say we face our backs against this wall and we're going to spawn one Peter. Okay. You can see he's clipping inside the wall and while it works, Sometimes you might not want objects to spawn inside the wall. So to fix this, you can use two options. First is try to adjust location, but always spawn. This works sometimes, but most of the time it will just spawn and use the same behavior as always spawn. So if we were to do the same thing here again, as you can see, it just spawned inside the wall this time but it's still spawned. Now, on the other hand, if we were to select do not spawn, if still colliding, let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to go beside the wall and boom, it doesn't spawn Peter. But if we were to move forward a bit, there we go. He still spawns. And lastly, we have do not spawn. So if it's colliding with anything, it will never spawn. Here it will try to adjust the location, but if you select this one, it just doesn't spawn it. All right, so I'll leave it as always spawn for now. Next, we have these two options, the owner and the instigator. And to test this, I have made a bit of code in the Peter blueprint. And this is just two print strings that will print out who the owner is and who the instigator is. So I'm just going to connect this and then we're going to fill these two pins. So for the third person character, we'll right click and get a reference to self and then connect it to the owner. 
and the instigator. And I'll explain what these two mean in, the, in a second. So with those plugged in, when we spawn a Peter, and you'll see printed on the top left corner, it will say, my instigator is third person character, my owner is third person character. So the owner is self-explanatory. It's the owner of this actor. So when we get the owner, we can know who, <laughs> who spawned this Peter. And the instigator is interesting. The instigator is for when Peter or any other actor causes damage. Then if it causes damage, we will know who or what is responsible for spawning that actor that caused the damage. So in this case, we will know that if Peter was to cause any sort of damage, the third person character is the one responsible for spawning Peter and causing this damage. Finally, we have the return value. This can be used or can be saved as a variable or in an array or anything else. And it can be used to perform different tasks on this blueprint. So this is how you use the spawn actor node. You set a class, which is the blueprint. You set a spawn transform. You set the collision handling override and then set the owner and the instigator if needed. I hope this video has helped you. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And if you have any suggestions on other tutorials I should make, please comment as well. Feel free to check out my Patreon in the link below. Don't forget to like, share, and most of all, please subscribe. See you soon.